So recently, I got debunked by the skeptic. If you don't know who he is, he's literally a Sir Sick copy. He's got a British accent. He makes the same bad jokes and Reddit level arguments. And since he made his video on me, his army of Redditors have came Ooh. and commented on my videos. Now, I didn't even want to make this video because now I'm making a response to a response to a response. To give you context, originally, I made a video responding to the friendly atheist and his 20 reasons to not believe in God. They were all fallacious, they were all terrible arguments, but now the skeptic has made his video. And all of my arguments literally go over his head, he doesn't understand basic philosophy. And you know, the skeptic and his fans, if you're watching this, I just feel bad for you. You're being cheated, you, do, you don't understand, you're, you're not even a skeptic, you're not even a skeptic. And so if you're so confident and you have the facts and logic on your side, let's debate the skeptic, come on. It should be easy. Let's debate atheist versus Christian ethics. If it's just so easy, I don't think he will. Because like Sir Sick, the skeptic, he doesn't show his face. He's scared. He can't defend his beliefs. So now let's respond to his response to me. No evidence. Wrong. There's no evidence? I mean, I guess if you ignore all of the ancient world and all of history, there's no evidence. I don't see how an ancient world can be evidence that there's a god. So there were people that existed once and they appeared in a work of fiction. If that's your argument, wouldn't that mean that since William Shakespeare wrote Julius Caesar, that William Shakespeare is in fact God? Well, that would change everything. What? This is such a terrible argument. When did I say, oh, this fiction, therefore William Shakespeare equals God? No one says William Shakespeare was God. I'm honestly speechless of how he just totally did not understand the argument. The friendly atheist said, there's no evidence of God. What would evidence of God look like? In Christianity, God became incarnate in man, Jesus Christ, so we would need to see some historical evidence for Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what we see. The New Testament is the best recorded document from the ancient world, and no, it is not fiction. It is history. And even non-Christian sources affirm the life of Jesus. And they affirm that people actually saw him come back, they saw the miracles, and that they eventually died for that eyewitness testimony. The New Testament is history. If you're going to deny Jesus and say, oh, that's fiction. Well, there's much more evidence for Jesus than there is Plato or Aristotle or Caesar. Now, do you think those people are fictional too? I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of, you know, skeptics, they're Wrong. history deniers. So which one is it? Is all the ancient world just fiction to you? No. Jesus Christ and the New Testament are historical and they are evidence, they are proof for God. Because people existed and had names. But I don't accept that the man had supernatural powers. I could also accept that a person called Jesus was left to die on a cross thing, since neither of those two things are extraordinary. But to say there's proof of a resurrection when all there seems to be is a story about a person saying some other people witnessed someone coming back from the dead is a little wrong. The friendly atheist said there is no evidence for God, so I bring up the historical evidence for Jesus Christ and his resurrection, and also all the other miracles that which lots of people saw, and they d went on to die for their eyewitness testimony. And a lot of this is affirmed by non-Christian sources. So you can't say the problem is a lack of evidence, it is your personal incredulity. You find it hard to believe, which is not a problem with the argument or the evidence, it's actually a fallacy. You can't say there's no evidence for God, you can just say, well, I find that hard to believe, which again is a fallacy. Holy books are not proof of the gods they talk about. Okay, but again, this isn't a problem with the evidence because the New Testament is a historical document that is affirmed by non-Christian sources. This is a you problem, not an evidence problem. And there's not even that many holy books. The Eastern religions are pointless because they believe in reincarnation, so you have unlimited chances. You can figure it out in another, another life of reincarnation, it's true. So that leaves you with the Abrahamic religions, which I've made lots of videos on, and we can disprove those. their holy books like the Talmud and the Quran because of the lack of continuity. Again, this is a terrible non-argument. In the test tube, oh, I see, I see God. So not everything is proven in the same way. This is the crackers in the pantry fallacy. God, again, revealed himself in history. That's not it at all. You can demonstrate things exist by, you know, demonstrating them. <laughs> you can't see barometric pressure, but you can see the effects of it over and over with repeatable tests. You can't use repeatable tests on a god that give the same conclusive results every time. So take your crackers and go and get some cheese. That's the only use for them. Most ignorant parts of the videos. He literally did not even understand what I was saying. I'm saying that not everything is proven in the same way. You don't prove logic the same way you do oh, I look in this, I see the star or I can I measure gravity. Not everything is proven in the same way. How do you prove logic? Can science prove logic? How do you prove that logic is logical? How do you prove ethics are 
are ethical. Again, not everything is proven in the same way. That's right. I brought up the crackers in the pantry fallacy. And instead of addressing the fallacy and address and looking into it, he just made a joke about it because he doesn't understand philosophy. And we can prove God with transcendental argumentation. It doesn't stop the evil in the world. In fact, if you read the Bible, God committed plenty of it. Evil. There's no evil on atheism. You cannot derive an ought from an is. There is no evil. There is no good on atheism. There is only what is. Rather than what you think a floaty, undemonstrated sky man's opinion is, we're cutting out the middleman and actually, in most cases, making better choices. Atheists and fraudulent people are the majority of atheists and judge people on their choices of the themselves. Things that, benefit me, things that benefit me and the rest of the species as a whole equals great. Things that don't, not so great. See? easy. It's so ironic because the skeptic knows nothing about skepticism. I made it easy. I had a graphic on screen of the is ought critique from David Hume, an actual skeptic, meaning you cannot derive an ought from an is, meaning that the world is, can be a certain way, but from that you can never get normative statements of how the world ought to be. But then the skeptic goes on to just completely ignore that. He says, what benefits a species is great. What doesn't benefit a species is not great. What What is benefit? What is great? Again, you claim to be a skeptic. What is good? What is bad? What are all these things? Why are you starting with an arbitrary starting point of oh whatever is best for the species which species are all species equal again there are all these ethical and meta ethical questions that you completely ignore he just does it just go over your head why don't you address the argument on skepticism on atheism why should we do things that benefit the species why why? Again, I'm just questioning your presuppositions, which you clearly do not do. What benefits the species? Why? It's arbitrary. It's just an ad hoc explanation. Why should we do that? There's no reason to do that because there is no ought on atheism. Please just address that point. That's an arbitrary starting to think is evil. God is perfectly good. Anything God did was good. There is no good. There is no evil. A Christian God is 100% good. What the... I mean, since we're dealing with an orthodox Christian here, I'm going to assume that he's talking about a version of the Christian God. <laughs> good. Sorry, I meant it sounds like a dick. Again, he totally misses the point, bringing up all this stuff. Oh, look at all this evil. E evil? What's evil? Show me a repeatable study. You said you only believe in something if science can show it. How does science show what is evil? What is good? Where Where is it? Do you have a peer-reviewed study on it? Yet you believe in it. Show me the evidence. It sounds like a fairy tale. No. Justify good and evil and ethics on atheism. You cannot. On Christianity, God by his very definition is good. God is the very definition. Only ever be what is. It will always be a non sequitur from you to say, oh, this is evil. Okay, where is the evil? I don't, I don't see a, a study on the evil. Can I look in a telescope and see the evil? Can I look in a, in a microscope? And where, where is the evil? Hey! Don't be mad that you can't think on your own and you need a book to tell you what's the right thing to do. I literally made it as simple as possible. I had a graphic on screen showing how on atheism it is a non sequitur to go from what is to how the world ought to be. The is a critique. This is actual skepticism. And you're saying that I don't know how to think on my own. Actually, thinking on my own is what got me out of atheism. Studying philosophy is why I understand these critiques and why I want to debate you because you have no idea what you're talking about. You aren't even Wrong. a skeptic. I mean, this, the skeptical points I'm bringing up just completely go over your head it's just it's just sad honest owning just about everything alive not a sign of love the world was incredibly evil before the flood what were you saying about opinions just a second ago the friendly atheist said the flood is evil okay what is evil on atheism god by his very definition is good you know they always complain how does god allow all this evil okay on the flood he ended all the evil and now you're still complaining and you're you're begging the question what is evil what is good on atheism they can't answer the question they just have a subjective arbitrary starting point justify it the opening lines of the bible are factually wrong why should we believe the rest of it? Wrong. How are they factually wrong? He doesn't explain how it's factually wrong. That's just your interpretation. It's wrong because, you know, age of the universe, sciencey type things. Oh, sciencey type things. I never thought about those. Actually, I did. That I used to be an atheist. I used to believe in, oh, the earth is billions of years old. We evolved from monkeys. But then taking a philosophy of science class and applying skepticism, I can see that the methods that they use to date, oh, it's a billion years old, you know, radioactivity, light, whatever it is, all of those are built on assumptions and then they extrapolate the data. For example, with radioactivity, they, you know, they study radioactivity for the last hundred years and they assume and they extrapolate that it has always behaved in the same exact way, even though we have evidence that suggests it doesn't behave in the same way. Yet
that they extrapolate that data and say, if it behaves this way, well, then the Earth must be billions of years old. Well, again, that is a unjustified extrapolation. You know, we you have no idea if you're a skeptic. You can't say with certainty how old the Earth is. It's an, uh, it's an assumption and an extrapolation built on that assumption that cannot be justified. I'll have an article linked below. Nothing about Genesis is factually wrong. Well, I guess that's where to finish this week then, because can you take a guy seriously when he says there's nothing factually inaccurate about Genesis? <laughs> I mean, I know I haven't read all of it yet, but the bits I have read are ridiculous. This is two atheists in a row, the friendly atheist and the skeptic, both asserting that it's factually wrong. And they say, oh, can we even take this guy seriously? Okay, all I ask is what is factually wrong? And neither of them can answer answer the question. It's a basic question. What is factually wrong about Genesis? If it's so easy and so rid ridiculous, explain. I don't think there's anything factually wrong about Genesis. If it's so easy, just explain. Prayer has never fixed anything physically impossible. Why won't God heal amputees? Jesus came and literally healed amputees. He healed so many people. Kyle talks about amputees and then proceeds to show a blind guy. Oy vey. And please stop using the Bible as evidence. It's a collection of stories. Stories aren't proof of something happening. The friendly atheist said prayer has never changed anything, which is a claim that he cannot prove. And then he said, why doesn't God help people? God became a guardian in Jesus Christ and literally helped people. And yes, I showed a blind person. Jesus helped lots of people, including amputees. Jesus helped so many people. And then he says, I don't believe the Bible because it's a story. What? All of history is a story. Do you not accept any history because it's a story? Again, there are ways to discern true history from false history. But to say that all of history is false because it's a story. What? Gods are demons and idols they are created. Jeez, going back to what the Bible says. You don't get to say my God is the right one because my book says the other gods are demons. How did you come to the conclusion that your holy book was the one that was true when the other holy books say the exact same thing about your God? This is built on the false assumption that all religions are saying the same thing. No, they aren't. So let's look at the world religions. There's Buddhism, there's Hinduism, and they say, oh, they don't say Jesus was a demon. They don't say our God is a demon. They embrace every religion in Buddhism and Hinduism because it isn't even about truth. Again, they believe in reincarnation. Their religions are fundamentally pointless because you have unlimited chances. So that throws out the Eastern religions. So you're only left with the Abrahamic religions. And we can you know, show which one is true and false based off the continuity because Second Temple Judaism is fulfilled when it's destroyed in Jesus Christ and Messianic prophecies. I've made lots of videos on the modern day Judaism that we see today. It does not have the continuity. And Islam is something that comes 600 years later. Again, not every religion says, oh, all the religions, all the other religions are demons. They don't say that, okay? Again, you, you act like every religion is exactly they, the same. They aren't. It's because, oh, you're born to have certain beliefs, therefore there's no truth. This isn't, this literally is not an argument. It's more that he's pointing out that others feel the exact same way that you do about their potential God. It actually makes a lot of sense when you step away from belief in any deity. You realize that pretty much everyone else believes the same thing about their God. And it really just depends on where they're born for it to determine which God they're defending. Has this guy even studied the world religions? Because they don't all say the same things. Buddhism and Hinduism say, oh, Jesus was a part of us. He was a yoga trying to subvert Christianity. Islam says, Jesus was a Muslim. He was a great prophet. Mary was a Muslim. Moses was a Muslim trying to subvert Christianity. And then rabbinical Judaism, which says, oh, they reject Jesus in the Talmud, but they still proclaim to believe in Yahweh. They act like there's no way to discern the truth just because people have different ideas. People have different ideas about a scientific theory. Therefore, they are all wrong. That is your logic. That is bad logic. This is a terrible argument that does not deal with the true or falsity of Christianity. Especially for me, I was an atheist. And then looking at the world religions, eventually I came to the truth, which was Orthodox Christianity. Now, does that make any sense? Because in America, we're 1% of the population. So if, if it was just based off geography and not truth, I would not be an Orthodox Christian. But I came to Orthodoxy because it is true. Theatric cancer. How does that disprove God? On Christianity, we can explain we live in a fallen world. You can read the story of Job, why bad things happen to good people. On atheism, it's a completely meaningless nothingness universe. There is no good. There is no evil. What's wrong with that? It's just, we're just bags of meat. Why does any of that matter? We're basically just biological robots. How is that debunking the friendly atheist? Atheists think humans are bags of meat. I mean, I don't, so that's wrong. Well, surely if a god creates a fallen world and humans can get cancer and specifically kids, we're also bags of meat in the eyes of a god. 
doesn't sound very loving to me. God created a perfect world with everything we could ever need, but he also gave us free will. Adam freely chose to do wrong, which caused death, decay, and destruction to enter the world, aka why we live in a fallen world. You could read the story of Job to see why bad things happen to good people. But God loves us enough, and he came incarnate in man to suffer and undergo all that, all the same suffering, all the same pain. He suffered such a terrible death and was resurrected to sanctify human nature, to re-establish that broken relationship between man and God. God loves us. On atheism, humans are just meat bags. Nothing matters. Our lives don't matter on atheism. It's just a big, meaningless universe. And it isn't that way in Christianity because we are made in the image of God. Okay, it's not up to you to decide what unconditional love is. But if unconditional love comes with any condition, it becomes conditional love. Even if that condition was, on a Tuesday I want to have a hug, then I'll love you. It becomes conditional love. No, he totally misses a point, and I explained this in the video, and I got so many comments from his fans who didn't understand that. It's not hard to understand. God loves us unconditionally. God will love you no matter what. It is a constant. But if you love God back, you will follow the rules, the commandments, because God wants what's best for you. Whether you follow the rules or not, God will love you. Do you understand? God will love you no matter what. You don't have you you can follow the rules or not. God will still love you. Okay? But I'm saying he implemented the rules to show that you love God. Okay, God loves you no matter what. But if you love God, you will follow the rules. Whether you follow the rules or not, God will love you. Okay, can can your commenters understand that? I it's not that hard to understand. And what I am saying that based on if you follow the rules, if you love God back, that will determine your experience of the afterlife. Because like I said, God loves you no matter what. It's unconditional. Yes, there are no conditions to the love, but God implemented these rules to show that you love God. It's about you loving God. That is why God implemented the rules. And the, the, if you die and you you know you never follow the rules and you never show that you love God, well, God still loves you. That that love, God's love, is going to feel painful. That would be hell. But if you follow the rules, then you love God back. Then that will be like heaven. That, that love is going to feel painful if you reject God. And the conditions is because God wants what's best for you, just like your father, your mother wants what's best for you. Contradicting here is so annoying. You literally just said God loves you unconditionally, but the conditions it does have are X, Y, and Z. This is really not hard to understand. God, your mother, your father, they love you no matter what. Their love does not change. It is an unconditional love. But if you love them back, you will take action. You will show that you love them. Whether you do the action or not, they still love you. It's not that hard to understand the skeptic. You, the God, your mother, your father love you no matter what. But depending on what you do is showing how you love them back. Whether you love them back or not, they still love you. A single supposed miracle gets debunked eventually. Wrong. Every miracle gets debunked eventually. Je the miracles of Jesus haven't been debunked. The Old Testament miracles have been debunked. Just putting a voiceover saying, wrong, doesn't count to the point. Wrong, We've wrong. already said that the Bible isn't proof of the miracles. They're the claim. It's not hard. No. You can't use history to prove history. Again, this isn't a problem with the evidence, but you not accepting the evidence. How do you prove anything historical? Because you said, oh, the history isn't proof of the history. The story isn't the proof of the story. What? Well, what are you even talking about? How do I prove any historical fact to you since you're just going to say no? Again, this isn't a problem with the evidence. It's a you problem. It's a personal incredulity problem, which is a fallacy. Don't rape people and slavery is not okay. Applied in the Ten Commandments and Jesus came and said, love your neighbor as yourself. He clarified all the teachings. He's the fulfillment of the law. We have the church that made clear teachings on this. How did we get rid of slavery? It was because of Christianity. Uh, the same Christianity that tells you how you should treat your slaves. The ancient world was a tough and brutal place. And what was going on back then was more <gasps> like a wage slavery. Like basically, I just need to work for you and you provide for me. And it, and you're missing the whole question of, I'm asking on atheism, where are the human rights? Why, what's anything wrong with that? Again, he does, he's not a skeptic, so he doesn't understand when I'm asking these ethical and meta-ethical questions. What's wrong with anything on atheism? It's just your opinion. Atheism didn't cause the abandonment of those. If we lived in an atheist society, there's nothing good or bad about those. In an atheist society, it wouldn't have happened in the first place. So... The Slavery would have never happened if we had atheist societies. No, we can look at atheist China even now, and they have lots of modern-day slaves. Terrible argument. Movies and music that honor God are just Wrong. off. I don't like Protestant music. Listen to some Orthodox Christian chants. 
That will literally move your heart. It doesn't prove a god though. The friendly atheist said a reason to not believe in God is because the music is bad. And so I brought up orthodox chants and orthodox movies, which are beautiful and move our heart. I didn't say that those by themselves prove God. I'm saying that the friendly atheist argument that there's no God because the, the, the Protestant music is bad is a fallacious argument. It doesn't deal with the true or falsity of Christianity. And there is lots of good orthodox Christian music. I never said good music, therefore God. And beautiful art. And just look at the atheist postmodern <laughs> art where they like throw up, they have like pee jars and period blood. No, you, we have a band. God is beauty. God is truth. I mean, I despair. This guy can't be for real, can he? And these atheists who abandon God, their art is totally destructive and ugly and postmodern. <sighs> just because you don't like artwork from people who don't believe in a God, it doesn't mean a God is real. This is just ridiculous now. I never said that. I never said Christian art is beautiful, therefore God is real. I was responding to the friendly atheist who said there's no God because the music sucks, which is a terrible argument. And I was bringing up the fact that all this postmodern, brutalist, atheist art is ugly. I never said that fact disproves God. Again, he just doesn't understand my arguments whatsoever. He totally ignores the original video. I made the video to respond to the bad arguments the friendly atheist made. Invisible and the non-existent look very much alike. Logic is invisible, ethics are invisible, a lot of your arguments were from ethics. Oh, the good, the bad, they're invisible. Mathematics is invisible, but no one says that mathematics, logic, or ethics created the universe. That's not even analogous. The whole point is that some god was supposed to have interacted with what we have today, so it would need some kind of physical presence. God did have a physical presence. He became incarnate in man and Jesus Christ in history. But again, you deny history. You think all of history is fiction. And the point I brought up about ethics and logic is you don't prove ethics and logic the same way you do any scientific study. They're proven in this in different ways. And God is the same way. Not everything's proven in the same way, huh? Well, that's clear. A god has never been proven in the same way the cheese sandwich I just ate was. <laughs> Truly intellectual Reddit tier humor coming from the skeptic. Yes, you don't prove God the same way you do a sandwich. You don't prove history the same way you do a sandwich. You don't prove logic the same way you do a sandwich. Again, God is proven with history and philosophy. Both you seem to not understand. What we used to attribute to a God. Again, this does not address the true or falsity of Christianity. There are things assumed prior to doing science, like the uniformity of nature, induction, all of these things that need to be assumed for the possibility of doing science of all. They can't be empirically proven, like induction, uniformity of nature, logic, all of these things, yet you need to have certain presuppositions or sorry, there has to be the necessary precondition, the divine mind, the revealed God. Well, no, you're just asserting that there does. And just saying that all this requires a God to be necessary, you're just replacing one word with God, which you still haven't demonstrated. The friendly atheist said, we attribute things to God that we now can have different explanations for. And I said, this doesn't deal with the true or falsity of Christianity. And then I brought up that we have certain presuppositions that cannot be justified on a purely materialist, atheistic worldview. There are things that need to be assumed for the possibility of doing science, like the uniformity of nature. How do you prove the uniformity of the nature with science? You can't. You need philosophy. And I'm saying that you can prove God in the same way. And that there are necessary preconditions. If you don't have the uniformity of nature, you have destroyed all of science. And this can only be justified with the philosophy of science. Was created. So this is arbitrary. This is not an argument. Who on earth says it was created? I've not seen a single scientist. I'm assuming you believe in the Big Bang, meaning at one point there was nothing and then there was something. It was brought into existence, aka it was created before scientists used to think for hundreds of years of static universe. The universe had always existed. So what do you call that? What's the difference between a static universe and the Big Bang, aka creation? You're a creationist just like me. There was nothing and then there was something. It only popped into existence. That sentence didn't make sense. If things didn't have meaning, then things don't just pop into existence. What does that even mean? There has to be potential. How do you go from nothing to something? How do you go from no meaning to meaning? How do you get all of these things? There had to be some first mover. There had to be a first cause. There had to be some purpose. Why did the universe come into existence in the first place? If God existed, he would smite me right now. God respects your free will. You can promote atheism. You can do whatever you want. Okay. 
Well, then, why does the gods' believers get so offended when someone says they don't believe in their sky daddy and feel the need to debunk an atheist who says they have great reasons to not believe in an invisible sky wizard? This is another terrible argument. We have free will, so why do you try and convert anyone? Just because you can do whatever you want doesn't mean you should do whatever you want. You ought to follow the true, you ought to follow the good, and you ought to be a Christian. I think there are good reasons to be a Christian, and the entire point of my original video was to debunk the 20 bad reasons reasons for his atheism. And I think the skeptic is not even a skeptic and he doesn't have good reasons to be an atheist. And I don't believe in an invisible sky wizard either. That's a straw man. That's not what Christians believe. Again, this entire argument is fallacious. The reason I debunk atheists is because they have bad reasons to believe what they believe. They can't justify their claims on ethics, on logic, on metaphysics. They constantly contradict themselves and they are leading people down a wrong path that leads to a worse life away from God. That's why. Just because you have free will doesn't mean you should freely choose the bad. I want to lead people to the good. Very low tier atheist apologetics. So many of his fans came on my video and commented that my entire argument was, Bible says so. No, read those arguments. I responded with 20 good counter arguments to all of the points he made. Friendly atheists had a bunch of fallacies, not arguments. Completely arbitrary. They have destroyed the possibility of ethics. It's completely self-refuting. Thank you, God bless. So basically, if you can convince yourself that an atheist doesn't have an argument against a God's existence, that means that God does exist. Like I've said so many times, the point of my original video was to respond to the friendly atheist's video about 20 reasons to not believe in God, showing that those were not good reasons to not believe in God. I have lots of other videos talking about the proof for God of why am I Christian, atheism debate. Go watch those. I was specifically responding to the friendly atheist. And you say there's zero proof of God, but I've brought up the evidence, I've talked about it with the historical proof, but you said, no, I don't believe history. All of history is a fairy tale, according to the skeptic. I've talked about philosophy, and instead you made a joke about uh, eating a, a cheese sandwich. I mean, what am I supposed to do?